Hey guys, if you're here checking out this video, it's probably because you're planning to take the September Digital SAT or the October Digital SAT. If you are here because of that, make sure you stick around because we're going to review a couple of problems that you could see in the new exam. Please note some of these problems might be easy, medium, or difficult for you, so make sure to check out the timestamp below so you can review your problems accordingly for the math portion of the digital SAT. Please note the disclaimer listed below. Okay, so just a, an additional disclaimer, the digital SAT just released some new problems and this was based on patterns and problems that were conducted on the past exams that were given out once the new digital SAT were released and those are the question banks. So make sure to check those out as well because those are free resources for you to utilize. So let's make sure to check out these problems to see if you could get one step ahead before your PSAT or SAT coming up. Now, for this problem, they give you a function and they ask you, what is the y-intercept? Just as a reminder, if you were asked about the y-intercept, let's review what that y-intercept looks like. So a y-intercept is when it crosses the y-axis. Remember, this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis. So they're saying that there's some sort of graph, we don't know what it looks like, but at some point it crosses this y-axis, which means that x is going to be equivalent to zero. You also know this because the answer choices also gave you those as values. That's a key trick to help you solve the problem because in this case the answer gave you what is the y-intercept even before you get started. So it's a basic plug and chug problem where you're going to plug in x for 0 or 0 for x and go ahead and plug that in. When you go ahead and do that, you could plug that into Desmos, but you should know off the bat that 3 to any power is just of power of 0, I should say. 3 to any power of 0 is automatically just going to be 1. So in this case, it's just 5 minus 7, and that gives you negative 2. So your best choice answer is A. So this is considered a difficult problem according to Question Bank. However, I want to note why this is considered a difficult problem because students often confuse Y and X intercept. But once again, you know because all the answer choices are there. Oftentimes you ignore the fact that any number to the power of zero is equivalent to one. The other issue that could happen is you plug it straight into Desmos and it takes actually a longer time to solve this problem on Desmos. I solved it pretty quickly without doing any of that. So just to note for our fan final answer of A, to make sure that you don't always need to plug into Desmos to get the quickest answer. This is considered, in my mind, a very medium problem, but for you it might be difficult or easy. Just make sure that you're not always defaulting to utilizing Desmos to solving these really easy problems that you don't even need to use a calculator for. Let's go ahead and tackle this problem together. They let you know in this problem that there is a function that they define by an equation defined as y equals and then a bunch of different things here. First thing you'll notice is there are x's in all of these and they let you know that there are two additional values r and s. So you notice that there are r, r, s, s and they let you know it's unique positive constants which just basically means that they're going to be unique numbers. So they want to let you know how many distinct x intercepts are in the graph above. So you might be thinking that you have to go ahead and graph it but you don't really need to do to so in this type of problem. What they're trying to tell you is when does it cross the x-axis which basically means that if you have equation, for example, if it's x to the third, you would know that it crosses three times. Or in this case, it would cross four times. Now you might think to yourself once again, let me go ahead and plug this into Desmos. But you don't need to think of it that way. Let's go ahead and go back to the problem and imagine y now equals zero. Because remember, if it's crossing the x-axis, that means that your y is going to be zero because, you know, it's crossing that line there. So for example, it's going to have values at x but nothing at y. 
Knowing that information, now you can think to yourself, if I go ahead and FOIL this, you know that there's going to be some value for each one of these. Or in other words, that I could say R x minus r equals 0, and then we could say x plus r equals 0. Basically, each one of these is going to be equal to zeros. Now, you don't need to write this all out. You're just doing this because you just want to be one step ahead in case you are given a problem like this so you can solve quickly. In this case, you see that the values are equal to 0, which also means that there are going to be four different values, right? So because there's four different values, four is going to be the correct answer, or C. So we don't need to solve, use Desmos or anything like that. You could see the parentheses out here and then think to yourself, all right, well, if there are four x's, then it's going to be the same thing as saying x to the fourth. The exponent, the highest one, can be the fourth. Therefore, there must be four ways that it could cross the x-axis. So making sure you understand that we would need those values to either separate or know the exponent. So I just want to let you know that it could be written as two ways to essentially determine that it's four. Once again, you don't need Desmos or anything to really solve this problem. This is just a quick and easy way to help you out when solving without actually plugging in the problem into Desmos. Let's go try to solve the following problem to try to find the center of the circle and also find the tangent of the line. So firstly, we know what the circle is because they let you know the center, which means that you have to plug it in knowing the formula. So if you remember, knowing the center you and the value of r, you could say x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. That is the formula of a circle. You will need to know that. That's why I just wrote that down for reference point, but you could plug that knowing that information into Desmos. So we have x plus 5, because remember it's going to be the opposite value. We have negative 5, negative 2 in the center, and because h is going to be our center, um, remember that h h comma k is going to be the value of your center, which means that you're going to have to note that that's negative five, negative two, and we're swapping the value to positive because we have an opposite symbol here. And then we are going to go ahead and square it. We have to go ahead and add parentheses, don't forget the parentheses, y minus k, which is negative two, so then that's going to actually be positive two, right? So that's going to be plus two, oops, y plus two, of course, making sure to double check the values as you enter them, equals r squared. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it as r squared just because I want to go ahead um, and just note that this is a circle. Uh, we don't know the value of the center being where it's going to be or how we're going to solve it. We can go ahead and make it bigger or smaller, but for now, just know that there is an R there. If you wanted to solve for R, you can by taking this value, plugging it in and solving for R. But right now we don't need that. Um, it would be too much information. And at some point we could slide the circle to see more information. So I just wanted to note that. Now we need to find the circle of a line or sorry, circle of the, not circle of the line, sorry, the tangent using the points negative one, negative four. So just to rough graph a circle, remember if I go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and erase this now, clear all drawings. If I have a circle and I'm going ahead and graphing it, the tangent of the line meets that one point. So if I have a center, you should remember that there's going to be that 90 degree angle right there. So if you remember, if the tangent of the line is going to be perpendicular, instigated by that 90 degree, you're gonna have to find the negative reciprocal for the slope. So what we mean by that is M is your slope value for this line. 
then for the perpendicular, it's negative one over m. And that's something that you should remember. So if I go ahead and need to solve for using the midpoint formula, we can go ahead and take these two values and plug it in. So I can go ahead and say negative four minus negative two over negative one minus negative five is going to give you negative two over four. Of course, you could plug this into your calculator. I would suggest if you're having a handheld calculator, you'd plug it in there just so you're not messing with this a little bit. You can plug it in here and solve, whichever works best for you. And then you would figure out that this is negative one half if reduced. So remembering this, our actual M, which is the negative reciprocal, is going to be positive two. Now we can go ahead and use the point slope formula or the understanding that y equals mx plus b. We can plug in negative one for x and we can plug in negative four for y because we got this and two for m to solve for b. You can plug it into Desmos, but just because it might be a little bit quicker just to quickly solve. I know this is negative four and this is going to be negative two plus b. Knowing this information, we bring over negative two to the other side. When I go ahead and do that, I solve for b. So that's gonna be negative two equals b. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and clear out my screen again, knowing that I could plug these values into my formula. Maybe I should just write it out here. So I know y equals 2x, because remember my new m is 2, 2x minus 2. And that's my tangent line. So I'm going to go ahead and plug that in. So I have y equals 2x minus 2. Okay, so now I can go ahead and move my R so it touches like that. And you can see the indication of when it touches right here. So I could keep moving it to try to see when it's gonna hit. So, so the line touching, when is it gonna hit? And which one is it going to be closest to? So we have the values here for reference, right? So for example, I don't need to make this perfect. I can go ahead and estimate with what I'm given. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear this out now that I have my graphs. Let's start with three comma zero. One, two, three, and then it's zero. So we're saying that's tangent, which it's not going to be. Like even if I go ahead and take this out all the way, it's not gonna to touch, right? It's gonna to touch what not tangent, it's separating, so that wouldn't be correct. So I'm gonna go ahead and eliminate that as a choice. Let's go ahead and take a look at one comma six. So one, five, six is going to be here. Go ahead and take my R and scroll it. Once again, you can see that it's not a j like tangent, like we said before. So that would not be a good value. So that was one comma six, or even it, it was one negative six actually. So if you had one and then negative six, even that on this side, so the value down here, it's not showing like a circle with a line, eh, a circle with a line through it. So we don't like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and take a look at negative seven, negative one. So negative seven, negative one, that would mean that it would have to touch there. So I'm gonna go ahead and move my cursor. And even if I get it centered, the line, this green line is not going on that side. So that's not the case. So now I'm looking at negative three, negative eight. So if I look at negative three, one, two, three, Remember we crossed that D. And then if I wanted to do five, six, seven, eight, that's somewhere around here. Let's see if uh, that works. So I can go ahead and move it a little bit. Ah, uh, yeah. So it goes and it touches that point, right? So it's 
one, two, three, and six, seven, eight. That looks like it works. So because it touches at both points, that would be a great point to have. So the answer is A. So hopefully that works in estimating the value. You can also um, try to solve for R if you wanted more exact of a problem, but this would be one of those things that you would just estimate and go ahead and finagle. Now, of course, like we wouldn't have exact all the choices, but it's a, just a fast way to estimate in this case to solve for the point that lies on the line. So hopefully that helps. Appreciate you riding along for our cosmic journey. If today's mission brought you the knowledge that slaps, make sure to hit that like button to boost that signal. Subscribe if you're locked in for our next launch. And don't miss the link tree. It's got all the goods for AP Bio, PSAT Math, and FSAT Math. Before I sign out, make sure you're all in one orbit and diving in. Killing out. Till next time.